Hi, and welcome to episode 15 of, of uh, season 3 of A Brief History of Nothing on the 16th of February 2016. And on this day, yes, well, on this day, Chopin played his last uh, concert in Paris. Just thought you were worried that you were going to miss it. Um, that was in 1848. Damn, I missed out! Yes. That! You're going to have to try and get a refund on the tickets. Oh, okay. No 1923, um, Howard Carter um, opened up King Tut's tomb. Um, and so, because people who were involved in it had died over the years, apparently there's a curse. Could be that they just died. Correlation does not necessarily equal causation. No. Um, the Patan Peninsula was retaken on this day in 1945. Um, as MacArthur said, he would return. Well, he didn't actually take Bataan, but he, the American army returned. And on 1959, Fidel Castro was sworn in as leader of Cuba. And as an old person, his brother's now, brother has now taken over. Yes. Now, you wanted to talk about asylum seekers, more particularly baby Asher. Asher. Yeah, there is a little girl, one-year-old girl, called Asher who is currently in the children's hospital called Lady Salento, which is in, here in Brisbane. What happens was that her the, her parents tried to get here via boat, and she was born in Nauru, in the detention, offshore detention facility in Nauru, um, because Australia at the moment has an offshore detention policy for those who try and come without documents. Asha was um, born on Nauru, and she was, she's been badly scalded by hot water while she's been on Nauru. Um, and she... That's why she is in Lady Salento Hospital. Salento. Now, she's in a good condition. She's perfectly stable and healthy at the right. moment. But, but the doctors don't want to send Asher back to Nauru. They, and they the, deem it is not suitable Yes, for, for the child to go back, which is fair enough. And so they are refusing to discharge the child from hospital, which is not going down well with the federal government. But the Queensland state government is backing the doctors um, about not releasing the child. Um, the federal government just won't budge on their um, that if you come by boat you don't get to stay in Australia until after you've been processed. The father is currently, he's being detained, well, being detained at a detention centre in Pinkabar in northern Brisbane. He's allowed to come visit occasionally, his family, um, and the mother is actually staying at the hospital itself. Yeah, well, that's just currently. Normal. Mothers with with infants, yes. Yeah, that's what happens. Um, now there is now the reason this is really starting to gain momentum is because there's been a large gathering of protesters outside the hospital in the last few days, ever since Friday, supporting the doctors, supporting the doctors and supporting Ash's family, um, because there is a very strong um, element in Australia that is against um, the current policies, the silent seeker policies um, that the Australian government has. Yeah, I look. I obviously every case has to be assessed on its merits. Yeah. And and I understand that the government is worried about setting precedents, but somewhere along the line, compassion has to come into this. Yes. The one thing I'm pleased about is that I'm not the person trying to get all of these factors together to come up with a solution. Um, I mean, it's much easier in our position to comment on it. Than because we're not in the thick of it. We're not in the thick of it. But still and all, compassion has to come into it somewhere. Um, yeah. But having said that, then you create a precedent and then, you know, so that's what the, the federal government is worried about. But guys, can we just sit down, interested parties, sit down and come to an agreement. The situation can't go on and it, to me, would seem inhuman and cruel to send the child back. Yeah, because even or even back because a lot of these people are trying to be sent back to the countries of where they came from. The reason they're trying to get away, oftentimes, and some of them might be a little bit dodgy, that's why you have due process. Yeah. But, but I think the government's gotta speed up due process. Oh there, there are people who've been waiting there for their pro applications processed for years. Yeah. This, that's just that's done called that's not okay. No, yeah, that's, that's not okay to leave you know, in those sort of conditions in for, extended, in, in, for extended periods of time. Is, is, and it's, it's not good for their mental health. No. Um, it's just generally not good. So, you know, it's all very well to have these rules, but 
I mean, if, if you're not going to look after these people in the best possible way, yeah. instead they're trying to do it the cheapest possible way. Which is the only thing this is going to create is trouble. Yeah, well, it's actually costing them more money doing it this way. Yeah, well, doing things on the cheap always does. Yeah, it ends up costing you long more in the long run instead of like putting, say, just quick quick thing though. What would your what would your opinion be of putting more consular support in Asia? Well, would yeah, that, would that help? This if you can proce process more at the point of origin, they don't have to get on the boats in the first place. Yes, yes. So they come in like on an aeroplane. It would make you know even even if you partially process them over there to speed yeah. the process up and finished off the processing in Australia, at least you would have weeded out the least likely candidates to get here. So that number would would fall. Yeah, well, the most of the vast ninety nine. I don't know the exact I mean, you're still going to have a huge amount yeah. of people are genuine trying to get away from famine, war. You know, yeah. I mean, you're always going to have people that are going to try and get into Australia, take a short cut to get into here, um, because where they came from is base are basically shitholes. So yeah. you know, if you yeah. lived in a shithole and you're looking at Australia, think, oh, you know, if I could only. Well, of course. Yeah. I um, mean, I mean, the plan might be to try and fix up the shitholes. Yeah, to try and provide humanitarian <laughs> assistance. And and so forth. Um, I mean, we can go. I mean, that that can get in discussions about you know the American and Australian involvement and British involvement in these places. And, and the, well, the we whole. don't seem to have any problem with spending. Well, in the sixties, we didn't have a problem with spending hundreds of millions of dollars conducting the Vietnam War. Yeah, which we eventually lost. Well, we, no, um, the, um, um, yes, the Allied side eventually lost. Technically, we didn't lose, but it essentially, it was a negotiated stalemate. Yeah, I mean, the, the Vietnam Vietnam is, a, I think, is actually a, so, a social so state now, anyway. Yeah, but so, we're very good at, at going to war in places. We're not really good at cleaning up the mess later. No, and and that's doesn't that's not necessarily Australia. That's pretty that, much universal. Yeah, that that's developed countries. You know, generally they'll go to war. Um, to make sure that nothing impacts on, on the country. Um, but they don't seem to worry about the mess they made over there. And, you know. And, and refugees as, you know, some of the things you've got to deal with when you're talking about war and, and, and so forth. Yeah. Because a lot of places like Middle East, you, you take out one person, um, the other, you know, someone else is going to, that's basically how ISIS got into power, mm. was, was they came out a lot of the rebels that were, you know, there were some regimes that were particularly bad, but they were the opposite to, I can't remember which denomination of Islam is who, but yeah, yeah, basically guess. one denomination was in power and being, yeah. and then ISIS came out of that, so... Yeah, it's... Look, I think less war, more humanitarian aid. That would be my plan in all this. That, that would work. Yes. Anyway... More compassion, people. More compassion, actually think about other people... So forth. Already. Yes, apparently, well, the major religions in the world say that they have compassion at their core, but they don't seem to be putting a lot of it into practice. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of religious and, and groups I'm saying, do a lot I'm of... I'm saying both Christian and Muslim, both of them say oh, they are compassionate. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them have, I mean, th there are, in most religious texts, there are some... Passages that are mm, <clears throat> right, okay, yeah, but so let's let's try and help people. If you, people don't live in shitholes, they don't want to leave them. If they live in nice places, they stay there. Yeah, that pretty much it. Anyway, okay, who got born on this day? Well, a really jolly fellow. A yeah, really nice, nice fellow. Yes, Can't 1941, a young young chap named Kim Kim Jong Il was born on this day. He, you know that little that free, open, democratic state called North Korea that's really free and liberal. Mm. Yes, that's them. That, that really <laughs> yes. Okay, for all the Trekkies, it's LeVar Burton's 
birthday. Born on this day in 1957. Transversely, um, in the 2300s, it will be Geordie LaForge's birthday. Who would have guessed that? Yes, <laughs> funny they should match that with... Anyway, <laughs> yes. 1958, Ice-T, rapper and star of Law and Order SVU, was born on this day in 1958. Um, the Bad Boy of Tennis, well, he was in the, in the 70s, um, the Bad Boy of Tennis. John McEnroe. He was born on this day in 1959. You're not grunt enough when he hit the ball. I oh, know, he do, he do dummy spits and throws his racket down and, and tell umpires that they must be joking. Okay, that the they, they must be joking. They, okay, okay. That, that was at the height of, height of insult, insult the umpires in the 70s, was it? No, no. The naughtier words were used, but you would get fined for that, so... Oh, okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, for all the Hoovians... Hi, Doug. Um... Christopher Eggleston was born on this day in 1964. On the reboot of Doctor Who, he played Doctor Who. He played, he played the first of the reboot. Yes. And no, for those who are uneducated, no, he wasn't the first Doctor. Okay? We get that out of the way. Yes, yes. He's just the first Doctor in the reboot. Um, yes, of course, he'll never be as good as Patrick Fountain, so it doesn't matter. No, he, no, no, no. Matt Smith is just simply better. Yes, says you. Yeah, certainly, because it's factually correct. <laughs> Fesses are cool. Fesses are cool. Fair enough. Uh, 1973, Kathy Freeman was born. And uh, 19, also in 1973... Um, little lady. Now, mo a lot of you won't know who she is, but if you're a nerd fighter like me, i.e. a fan of Hank and John Green, you will know who she is. Maureen do, Johnson. Do, 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 the, do the thing. Do the thing. Do the, 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 the Vulcan thing with the arms crossed. Yes. It doesn't matter, apparently, which way it goes around. So... Hang Get on. together. No, no, no. We need we need some rubber bands here. He he can't he can't think. He <laughs> I can't can, nerd I can think that way. I just can't think that hang way. On, hang on, hang on. I'll do that. Right. And now now you're good. And now you do that way. Hey, there we go. There we got it. Um, oh, anyway, amazing. I thought the Vulcan thing was with the thumb in. It originally was. It originally now was with the thumb it. in, and sometimes the thumb out. It originally because it's actually um, Leonard Nimoy came up with it because. Um, rabbis in the in a Jewish service would do the whole thing. It's meant to, I think, it's meant to be a, a Hebrew letter or something. Okay. But um, yeah, they do that, and that's I noticed in, in the early Star Trek series they did it that way, and now you see them they do it that way. In Voyager they do it that way. Hmm. Voyager is much more interesting than the original tr series. Original series is boring. Sorry, sorry, dedicated drinking. For, the, for those of us who watched it when it was the new thing on TV, it wasn't boring. Okay, but Voyager is much better. Okay. And then DS9 is better than Voyager. Oh, I can see this causing controversy. Alright, be nice to each other in the comments. <laughs> okay, well, we haven't, we haven't, we, unfortunately we didn't have a Star Wars person. So we haven't, we haven't, we're not balanced tonight. No, no, you're the closest we've got to a Star Wars person. Star Wars. But you saw the light and, and followed Star Trek a bit too. A little bit, but Star Wars is better. Okay. Anyway, if you liked tonight's episode, hit like. If you want to subscribe, hit subscribe. If you want to inflict this on your friends, do that too. Okay. See you in the dark side. We've got cookies. Bye.